So what, how do, what does your stock port, portfolio look like in terms of what actual sectors you invested in? What big names you invested in? And what are your, what are your favorites? Right now, I really like uh, biotech. Um, I've, I, I, okay, so I've got a couple of core positions that I really like, and they're diversified across a couple of different industries. I think Nokia is probably one of the most underrated companies right now. And, and a lot of people look at Nokia. Well, most of my portfolio, I get a lot of backlash over my portfolio because they're, they're companies that are certainly out of favor, like Nokia it hasn't done anything for 20 years, but they changed the CEO. It looks kind of interesting. They've got a fantastic balance sheet. They're also generating 600 million euros in free cash flow per year. And they've started to generate a, a lot of funding from the European Union for figuring out and identifying what 6G is going to be. So they made a lot of mistakes with 5G. They're starting to make strategic partnerships to get back in, in, in the game. And they're already starting to consider their investments in, in 6G, which I think is excellent. So moving forward, I think Nokia is probably one of the best opportunities over the next couple of years. I also have another, like Dropbox is another one where people think of it as a 2009 type company, but Dropbox is probably one of the greatest companies in terms of cash flow I've seen in a while. A lot of people think that there's more people sort of uninstalling Dropbox than actually signing up. And in the last year, they added 1.25 million new um, paid users. And the ARPU's increased from $128, uh, 123 up to 128, which I think is fantastic. So when you're looking at uh, companies that are slightly out of favor with improving fundamentals, I think they're fantastic opportunities. So Dropbox, uh, Nokia, Regeneron's another one that hasn't done anything in five years, yet the, the fundamentals are actually improving. So the earnings over that period are actually up 280%. And the top line revenue is up 150%, yet you're paying a lower market cap today. And the management think the company is so cheap that they went and bought $5 billion worth of stock back. And so these are the type of companies that I'm invested in. I also have some in like oil and gas in AMLPs, or sorry, not if that's the ETF, the MLP ETF. No, I've got an, an MLP, which would be um, a master limited partnership. These have tax benefits and you can get a, a reasonably good dividend yield. Well, a really good dividend yield. I've got a company called Energy Transfer, which uh, uh, delivers a 10% dividend yield, but I think it's undervalued by probably about 100% over the next couple of years based on its cash flows. And so there's a lot of opportunities in, in very unfavorable industries. And I think what, what essentially has happened is the market's gone way too far towards green energy and they don't realize how dependent we are on the old world still. And uh, ju like, just to give you a little example of just how dependent we are, the electrical grid has about 6% of excess capacity. And there's a lot of people betting on electric vehicle companies right now, thinking that next year Tesla will deliver a million cars, then two million, and all this competition is going to ramp up. We just don't have the electricity to actually support that yet. And so I think that, you know, there's, there's a fantastic situation where a lot of older industries are going to mean revert over the next couple of years. And certainly it's already started, like November, December, and even into January, you're seeing these oil and gas companies, even financials, anything that's inflation sensitive is up 50, 60% in a very short period of time. And that sh shows you just how far um, into the renewable space that, that people went. And, and I think that there's a fantastic mean reversion, mean reversion is still underway in those, in those industries and sectors.